Straight ahead on the show, it's crunch time for the three-year-olds thinking Kentucky Derby. We will preview the 100-point wood, bluegrass, and Santa Anita Derby. Keeneland's back with a 15-day, 18-stake, $4.1 million meet. And oh, that bet battle has seemed more like a friendly. One of us has got to score this weekend, right? Fingers crossed. It's time for Racing Around the World, brought to you by HPI Bet. Let's go. Racers team are down the outside. The Mystic Guide races away in the cup. Inside the 200 metres mark. Gets away by three. Chua with that hypothetical salute the soldier Magnet Corps. But it's going to be a Godolphin win. A Godolphin USA win. Mystic Guide charges away and takes the Dubai World Cup. Mystic Guide wins easily. It's known agenda and Irad Ortiz Jr. now moving away from Soup and Sandwiches back to second. Then Greatest Honor and Nova Rags. 16th to go. It's Pletcher in the Derby again. It's known agenda for St. Elias Stable under Irad Ortiz Jr. Two and a half clear. Happy Easter from our family to yours. Jason Portwando, Chad Rosema rejoining you. And uh, uh, good to see you, by the way. Good to see you, my man, on this long weekend. Uh, yeah, I hope we en- uh, you enjoy it with your family as well. And uh, just looking forward to another great weekend of racing. Well, let's talk about the opener. We just saw a bit of a refresher from last week and Mystic Guy becoming the 12th American train horse to win the second richest race in the world. And the ninth winner sent out by Godolphin in those blue colors. And Godolphin still looking for that first Kentucky Derby win. And they've got a couple of good ones on the trail. We'll talk about those a little bit later on. But yeah, Mystic Guy, I mean, he just cruised, crushed, and uh, hearing that he's going to get some well-needed time away, and he'll point towards a late summer return to the track. Somewhat fitting that uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, you know, the inventor of this race, gets another one there. Uh, no agenda. I don't want to talk about it. I know you don't want to talk about it, but mm, we're somewhat nope. contractually obligated to do so. You liked that horse before, came off him, and we all know the rest of the story. <sighs> Liked him in the Sam F. Davis. He galloped out past the field, uh, then came back crushed. But was it Lasix? Was it Blinkers? Well, looks like it's just a horse that's got a lot of talent. He won. Now, my question to you, yep. you know, greatest honor, third, well-beaten third. Was it more of just kind of uh, an experiment ahead of the Kentucky Derby for that horse? Might be, might be. I didn't like the trip, to be honest, for a horse that doesn't no. like kickback. You put him down on the inside. It, it just didn't make sense. But Florida Derby, number six, I do believe, for Pletcher, if I'm not mistaken, by far wow. his biggest, paying almost $13. And it capped off a record meet for rider Erad Ortiz at Gulfstream Park. So that's now in the rearview mirror. Let's look ahead, bring you up to date in terms of the three-year-old scenes. First up, the guys. And it seems like every time we look at this Derby points, leaderboard chad there's a new name atop the heap yeah well we know hot rod charlie had that big win um you know two weekends ago and then like the king got the win in the jeff ruby as you talked about there 104 known agenda you know known agenda was 44th coming into last weekend start and you can see what a win does obviously with these big points just propels you right up that board and now the pressure's off right you've uh, you know many of these have stamped their ticket yeah, for that first Saturday in May, which is coming up in just four weekends. And then the Phillies this weekend, Jason, final weekend for the preps. I think there's five total, but four with huge points up for grabs, that being 100 to each winner. There's your look at that first Saturday in May projection and that final Friday in April projection for the guys and the girls sinking uh, Derby and Oaks. So, a lot to talk about, and uh, the news isn't all good. I mean, those of us at Woodbine Mohawk Park, uh, we are going to be put on hiatus one more time. Um, we understand, we get it, part of this emergency break situation by the uh, government. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. You know, obviously nobody wants us, but we all want to get back to where we don't even have to think about a scenario like this playing out again. And let's just hope that it's very short and everything gets on track because it's not a great senior right now, but I will quickly say, Jason, you know what? Horsemen and horse people, don't stop doing what you're doing because they're doing things very well and keeping things safe as we look at the schedule heading up to this weekend. 72 hours of programming on HPI. It was a fabulous free preview for the entire 
month of March for those of you that were able to uh, partake in that. And yeah, with April in action, my goodness, yeah. it's just great to have Keeneland back. We didn't have them in the spring last year because of COVID, so they are back. And of course, that'll be the spotlight this weekend. When we get to Sunday, of course, this being you know a, a very sacred weekend, you're going to see not a lot of action. In fact, look at that Gulfstream Park at 1 o'clock, but then a lot of the other bigger name tracks not in play for Easter Sunday. Yeah, uh, you know, just uh, as we know, a little bit lighter. But uh, again, pretty big Friday and Saturday uh, with, with a lot of significant races. And yes, that Keeneland meet, everybody looks forward to whenever Keeneland comes and races. But uh, yeah, that 15-day meet wrapping up on the 23rd. We welcome back Harris Philadelphia, too, on the harness side. April 2nd to the 23rd. And yeah, Harris, I love, uh, love, love that meet a lot. But then again, you know me, I love <laughs> any racing you meet. Any but yeah, meet. Keeneland, yes. the 2nd to the 23rd. Uh, 15 days in total, as talked about. There's a look at what's coming up in terms of graded stakes action at Santa Anita. And speaking of Santa Anita, Chad, Sunday, the last Flores, we welcome back the champ Gamine as well. So a lot of the big name horses are starting to resurface. Mm -hmm. Drew the rail uh, in that in mm -hmm. that contest, so lots of stakes action to take in, and it's not going to slow down. It's going to just kind of continue, continue on, and you can see Japan Racing Association, another big uh, racing event as well coming up. Just like last weekend, where you know Gulfstream took advantage of their Florida Derby Day, Santa Anita Parks planning to take advantage of their Santa Anita Derby Day with the jackpot or the mandatory pick six. 640 right. grand that's coming into friday's program so if it doesn't go porty it's going to be even bigger that's right and look forward to that and before we talk santa anita derby let's begin with our first 100 pointer it's the 97th edition of the toyota bluegrass if you will 23 horses have used this race as a stepping stone en route to the derby will we get more of that this weekend and of course all eyes heavily fixated on that you know, division leader, essential quality, trying to remain perfect for Brad Cox and company. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time, though, since a Bluegrass winner went on to win uh, the Kentucky Derby. Uh, so they're kind of trying to end that. And uh, hey, we've got right now at least talked about essential quality being the top colt, you know, and until proven otherwise, uh, that's how we got to keep uh, keep referring to him, right? He's, he's four for four. But yep. There's a couple others in here, and I know you're going to keep a close eye on one that you've got a futures wager on, and that is your post three starter, highly motivated. He had the same post in the grade three Gotham. You tried him here. You know what? It was his first start going a mile, uh, stretching out. One term mile, but still stretching out. First start of the year. He had that slow beginning. You could see just kind of, you know, with, with Castellano starting to kind of rush up, get into the mix here. But then all of a sudden, he's got a steady. And now he ends up, you know, that's kind of already two, you know, things that held him back right off the right. bat. Then we get into the top of the stretch. We've got that good stretch duel between Wayburn, who we're going to see back in action this weekend, Crowded Trade, who, uh, you know, both of these fought really hard. But highly motivated. I mean, if you could pick out anybody that ran on well on the end of this race outside of the top two that looked really good, it was this guy. And... I would say from your, your perspective and from the Connections perspective, for the first start of the year, going longer for the first time, is this not exactly what you want to see? Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, Chad spoke about it, thinking, you know what, a one-turn mile is perfect for the reintroduction for this guy, first start as a three-year-old. I'm not disappointed, the fact that he didn't win. Obviously, the ultimate goal is that first Saturday in May. Sure, the betters yep. are disappointed. He was four to five and didn't look like anything like a four to five choice but uh i'll get to my point in a second but uh which way are you leaning are you gonna go with the champ or are you gonna try to beat him i considered this guy but you know what i i'd rather just see him continue to improve and and then peak for the derby and i think the connections would love that too but i gotta stick stick with essential quality here i know i tried to beat him in the grade three southwest that uh, was not a smart move and i don't think he beat a whole lot in that race but still he did it very very easily in the slop it was a good start to the year for him uh you know going the two turns there he's come back he's worked great it's brad cox it's Saez, it's godolphin this is their big one trying to win their first derby and i think uh i think the beat continues on for him in this start at least i agree you know the southwest came up skimpy not his fault you know uh all you can do is beat what's you know facing you on the other side of the football field the uh, arena regardless of the sport so i get it 
you know, maybe it's a bit of a greatest honor feel here where he doesn't have to win this race, right? And greatest honor obviously didn't need the points from the Florida Derby and was raced like a horse that didn't need the points. And maybe I get lucky here with the central quality. I'm going to go highly motivated again. I really feel like that's a perfect primer. He gets back to the track where he won the, the uh, Nyquist the year prior. And I really feel like, you know, this guy is perhaps going to show up big time. And he needs to. He needs to because, as we've talked about, it's situation critical for a lot of these three-year-olds. Outside of that, though, Chad, I, I really couldn't find anybody else. I mean, keep me in mind, I guess, is part of the mix, but it looks to be a two-horse race. Well, and I, you know what, honestly, what about Hush of a Storm? I mean, I was liking him last week, and he scratched yeah. out of the Jeff Ruby stakes, which looked like a much easier spot than this. Two racing here, knowing essential quality is going to be in, and he's 34th on the points list. He needs points. So what, what do you think of the strategy there? Mm, I don't know. Perfect on synthetic debut on dirt. Tough spot was a non-factor. I, I guess we're going to find out. I think this is uh, yeah, the time for a lot of the connections to say, hey, either we put up or we need to shut up. On we go to Aqueduct in New York. They've got a huge card as well coming up on Saturday. This is by far the most wide open prep of the weekend. We got four Triple Crown winners that have used this race then on to the Derby. And of course, this race was canceled last year, Chad, and it is back with a bang. From a betting perspective, this is the best one by far as talked about. Yeah, it is a good looking group in here, that's for sure. Uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of high end talent that, you know, you could probably see, maybe not necessarily the Derby, but just beyond that, horses that could develop into, you know, just some major, major stakes. Or is it Brooklyn Strong that's got a big fan following? He's making his first start of the year, and it's going to be his fifth lifetime outing, his fifth different rider as well. But we already talked about Godolphin. They've got essential quality. They have another star in their hands here, maybe with prevalence. <laughs> I mean, prevalence turned yeah. heads, you know, with that upset win on January the 23rd. And, you know, trainer Brenna Walsh made a good point and said, you know, it's one thing to do that. We've seen it many times. Horses come out, they, you know, get a big buyer figure and they really impress. But to come back the next start after you know now what your job is to do it again, he did this, rated well, and, and ended up drawing away you know, to, to win here at Gulfstream in an allowance event. Three lengths under Gaff Leone again. Um, you know, back-to-back -back good starts for him. And he's a horse. I just looked at his most recent work as well in 47-3. and three, And wow, did he Great. ever make it look effortless. Effortless. So I think prevalence is, uh, you know, it's, it's not just the, you know, the buzz horse. I think he is a legit win contender in here. And I think he's going to show up in his stakes debut. So I am going to ride prevalence in this event to remain undefeated. As I always say, you can't argue with perfection. And this guy, I know it's been a steep learning curve. Didn't race as a two-year-old. A couple of races now as a sophomore. Kind of a quick comeback after that race we just saw on March mm -hmm. the 11th. So questions to ask, but uh, he just might have the answer. For me, I'm going to go risk-taking. I love the way Chad Brown said we're going to sit out of the Gotham. He does not need a one-turn affair. This is a two-turn horse. This is a horse that is a course and distance winner, and uh, I really feel like the theme can continue. Mile and an eighth again at Aqueduct. Hard to believe, though, Chad, that Clarevich Stable, Erad Ortiz, Chad Brown, not one of the three have ever won a Wood Memorial. I think that change is coming up on Saturday. I'm going to go risk-taking at 5-2 to two on the morning line. But again... By far, the best betting race of the three preps coming up on Saturday. All right. Well, we've got more to talk about in terms of the Wood Memorial because we've got some Canadian content. Weyburn, don't think just, you know, stateside in terms of the Kentucky Derby. He's also got to think uh, Queen's Plate down the line. And things perhaps a little bit yep. easier this time around, going from that first Saturday in May all the way to the end of August instead of earlier for the Queen's Plate. So earlier this week, I had a chance to speak with uh, General Manager Robert Landry, former jockey, now General Manager of Chiefswood's Racing Stable, and talk about their champ, Weyburn. He's been doing well. Jimmy's been happy with him. He blew him out yesterday in 36 and change, and he went well. Um, you know, obviously, there's a lot of unanswered questions. He's running two turns for the first time, which I do not perceive to be a problem, but, you know, until they actually do it, you never know. Um, you know, obviously, we have high hopes for him, and, and, you know, it'll answer a lot of questions um, on Saturday as to, you know, where we go from there. Well, obviously, you're never going to rule out the Queen's safety and from Canada, but, you know, if he's been up to 
win a, an American Triple Crown race, and that's what we're going to try to achieve. All about the bloodlines. And, of course, Chad, he's got the half-brother Yorkton that's uh, standing as well in his uh, next career. Yep. So, hey, why not take a shot? And this race, again, it's it's wide open. You got the late lead switch there, and that was a difference. Trevor McCarthy, great ride. And who knows? Uh, funnier things have happened. You know, and he's only one of a, a couple of horses that don't have to sweat it this weekend. Yes, you want to go into the Derby still with good form, but he's got his spot secured. Others desperately need the points to be able to get into that first Saturday in May. So I think he's in a likable situation. All right. We'll keep an eye on that son of pioneer of the Nile. Off we go to the Santa Anita Derby, where three of the last nine winners of this race have actually gone on to win the Kentucky Derby. Uh, I know mm -hmm. it's been a while since we've uh, seen one in terms of the Derby. It's Fusaichi Pegasus, actually, going back to 2000. So, yeah, it's been a little bit of time. Even last year's runner-up, Chad Authentic, went on to win the Derby itself. I know we had that crazy schedule. 100 points, up for grabs. And I really feel like it's up for grabs. It's not as wide open as the wood we just talked about, but I still feel like this race could be primed for an upset. What about you? Well, and if life is good, doesn't get injured and, and off the trail, this is where he would have landed. And what exactly. would we be looking at? A five, six horse field, maybe? Yep. I mean, he would have yep. scared away a lot of the competition. But now... It's a much more intriguing race. Yes, Baffert's still got a nice one-two punch, but there's others to consider in here. And one of them, uh, sent up by John Sadler, who won this race in 2010 with another son of Candy Ride, Sydney's Candy. He's got Rock Your World. Now, Rock Your World is two for two to begin his career, but they both came on the turf. Now, being a son of Candy Ride, you'd think dirt's not going to be an issue. Well, you can go back and, and uh, you know, XBTV providing great footage of these workouts. And here he is on the outside. And this is him in his most recent work, March 28th, 59 and one, going five eights. Love the way that he's galloping down the lane here. And then even on the runout, we're gonna see it, just how strong he is. So, I mean, he's he's worked other times on the, on the dirt as well. And, you know, five eights, three quarters. So distance obviously isn't gonna be an issue either. But just to see him get over this footing, you know, when, when right. there's that unknown until he actually does it, by my eyes, Jason, I think he looks pretty good. I'm with you. I'm with you. And I love watching the gallop out as well. So, yeah, I just really feel like this is a type of race where we might see a surprise. And even though the horse has never competed on dirt, the work looked pretty good. And if he can make that transition, you never know. I, I, I'm thinking upset. I won't say who. I'll defer to you first. Well, I'm going to go Dream Shake from post position two. Flavian Pratt taking over. Rosario is out of town, obviously, with other engagements. I think he's at Keeneland uh, riding. But you know what? Very impressive debut winner. And then kind of thrown to the wolves in the grade two San Felipe. And you know what? Through some quick early fractions, this horse hung around and then ultimately tired a bit, but still third behind Life is Good, who was romping in that race. I think that was a good start for him going two turns, getting that experience. He's come back. He's worked great. Dream Shake with a winning effort this weekend. Going to be right there. Anything close to that last effort makes him a player, as talked about. Uh, it's kind of that ab addition by subtraction with no life is good, wide open race. I'm going Baffert, just not the Baffert you're thinking. Uh, defunded for me, that was an explosive victory last time out. And I know it was against easier. It was just a maiden breaker. Now he jumps all the way up into stakes company. But I really feel like if he can put that type of run in once again, there's speed to chase. And uh, on the, the dam side, I know it's more of a sprint feel, but you do have multiple route winning sibs. And hey, it's Baffert, right? He's got a record nine Santa Anita Derbies. Nine, Mike Smith has won ridiculous. four, uh, including the last three. So defunded for me, I think flies under the radar in the stakes debut. I like the top side as well. You got the Florida Derby, Florida Derby winner influencer of dialed in. I'm going defunded, looking for the upset uh, in the Santa Anita Derby. All right, let's switch tracks. Let's switch gates if you will which breeds completely we're talking a little harness and once again need to reiterate the fact that uh, the government the latest emergency break that they put on with the province will affect the racing at woodbine mohawk park chat yeah and as we mentioned it's unfortunate but uh you know we we follow any guidance from the government and we'll continue to do that and we just you know keep doing what uh, what we're doing and just hope for good news in the near future and that we get back racing soon because we as you know jason we're what a month and a bit away from kicking off our championship meet at mohawk park 
That's right. It's not that far away. And we waited a while to finally say the valedictory final. Well, it's coming yes. up on Friday. Just a half dozen. Inside, outside looks to be where it's at. Yeah, I mean, both the valedictory and Niagara, you know, meant to be Boxing Day, but as we know, we had that previous shutdown. So these just got in under the wire now with the latest shutdown, and I'm sure the connections are more than happy. Uh, They deserve it, I think. But yes, compact field looks like a two-horse race, maybe just a one-horse race, because when you go back to the valedictory in December, Beyond Better raced well in both legs. He was second, and then he was a winner. That latest win then propelled him. He's since won four in a row, and it's just a different story. He wasn't even a favorite, Jason, in those legs. Well, that'll change now on Friday night. He will be the overwhelming favorite in here. 100%. And Trevor says to Bob, thanks for keeping the seat warm, but I am back, and I will take charge of Beyond Better. Yeah, I, I think he wins at a small price. What about the Niagara? Do we get a better number here? Perhaps, maybe not. Rose Run victory. After winning at 12 to 1 last time, but I realized different scenario. All of a sudden, she's labeled as the 8 to 5 choice going in. Well, and she comes in not, not, like confident. And she, she, you know yourself, look at the group of mares she beat last time. Yeah. She doesn't yeah, have to first, face that type here. Her biggest threat is stuck in post position 10. I'd still say look out for man, don't forget me. Because if that one can get a trip, if Sylvan can get this one away from the gate well enough and then follow Eddie, if he can get on that one's back, maybe... He can pull off the upset, yep. but Rose Run victory. They're going to have to do some racing, Jason, to prevent her from sweeping this series. And you're right. She dead heated last time out with Kloof Street. Uh, yeah, that's a, small, a salty, really good mare. So I, I'm yeah. with you. I think Rose Run victory is going to be tough. If she shows up, she doesn't. And who knows? Uh, speaking of showing up, we need to show up because this bet battle has been anything but. I can't even say uh-huh. back my popular uh-huh. demand because it has been a struggle. Yeah, it has. Hey, we've been close. It's just we you have, know, we have kind of kind of getting some things around. I'm I was starting to wonder whose drought was going to end first, the Sabers or ours. But <laughs> we know the Sabers finally won the other day. So let's uh, follow suit, right? Let's get out of this slump. And uh, looking forward to it. All right. Well, we're not exactly 0 for 18, but uh, yeah, 25 right. dollars is what we got to spend. So. How are you going to break down your uh, $20, $25 wager? Well, you know, the more I look at this race, 40 of the grade two Shaker Town at Keeneland, mm-hmm. um, maybe we should have picked a, a, a field with five or six or something in there. Is this a good group? I mean, you've got a Baker's Dozen. You know, you've got Bound for Nowhere, the 13 that's raced in this three straight years, won it uh, back in 2018. And then you've got uh, Imprimus. Uh, from post position two. I, what I like about this horse is not just his talent, but the fact that I think there's going to be so much speed with a lot of speedsters on the outside in the gate with this short five and a half furlong sprint. And I think he is going to end up just kind of getting a nice seat and be able to rally down the lane. So I really like him. Everything is built around him. I'm going to go him for the win. I'm going to go him on top with the 13 in behind for second and third. I've got a bunch of them in those other spots for the try. And then I've got three bucks left. So why not just go an exacta? 213 but the two needs to win for me and uh, needs a trip because uh, you know he's going to be back and then put in that late run and he's obviously a formidable foe uh, wouldn't surprise me if he even goes off as the favorite in here I'm going to go to the far outside he's got enough speed to overcome the dreaded draw bound for nowhere you talked about him showing up every year in this race and he's a couple next shy of having a three race run in terms of the Shaker Town, only multiple winner over the Keeneland Turf Course, 23%. Wesley Ward with this type of layoff horse hasn't raced since last year's Shaker Town in mid July. So, is he going to be ready? The work suggests he will. I'm going to bet him to win for 13 bucks. So, 13 to win on the 13. Play him top and bottom with a few other horses in terms of the exacta. And we have to click. We have to click. This hey, is- I'm going to root for you. I want okay. you to get your 213 exacta, okay? That's it. Because if you get that, then I'm yeah. good. All right. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And yeah. as always, we appreciate you uh, tuning in. Our thanks as well to Rob Landry, General Manager of Chiefswood uh, Racing Stable. And, yeah, there's a lot of ground to cover. Is there one race in particular that stands out for you or, or not really? It's, it's not a race. I think it's a, a meet. Uh, you know, Keeneland's going to be great with that short spring meet from start to finish. But just this weekend, what a great way to open it up. And two-year-olds, by the way. 
First yes. two-year-old races of the year go on Friday. That is what signals spring for me. So we are glad Keeneland's back. We're glad you're back with us. Our thanks to everybody who made this show possible, including you, the viewers, as uh, talked about. That's why we do it each and every uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Catch us anytime over our social media networks as well as HPI TV. For producer Luke Van Belkom and Chad Rosema, I'm Jason Porwando saying thanks as always for the company. We'll see you next weekend for another edition of Racing Around the World brought to you by HPI Vet.